Florida and DJ Lagway returns, beats LSU 27-16. Long Saturday for Brian Kelly. Uh, not a good look. They didn't play very well. It's hard to believe. I, I looked up tonight, I think October 25th, if my, if my uh, sources are correct. LSU was undefeated, going to Texas A&M in the top 10, firmly in the playoff picture. Now, probably out of the top 25. Basically, no shot to get to Atlanta. The playoffs, we can just laugh about that. Uh, Chris, I, I don't know, oh, man. If you if you think about think the about depth, this? the depth and the talent of the SEC, I think the committee has to consider a four loss <laughs> LSU team getting into the playoff. The conference is just that good. Um, yeah, man, this was a really really bad performance from LSU. One week yeah. after a really mm-hmm. really bad performance against. Alabama. This One is week a after a really, really bad second half performance against, against Texas, Texas A&M. A&M. And this is, look, DJ Lagway, that dude is special. Mm-hmm. You can see it. You can you can make the case it's worth keeping Billy Napier just so you keep him for another year at this point. But you could also tell he wasn't 100%. He's still coming back from that hamstring injury. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and they just couldn't get the stops and Florida was able to run the ball. LSU actually ran the ball a little bit. Garrett Nussmeyer all over the place once again um, with, with some turnovers and some other things. And now LSU's in a really bad spot. This is year three for Brian Kelly. We can talk about Brian Kelly in a minute, but man, things are not good for them. And Florida's not probably going to a bowl game, by the way, because if they beat yeah. one loss, Flo- mm-hmm. if they beat one win Florida State, they're in. So. Let's not let's not count our chickens before we hatch with this Florida team, <laughs> David. Right. Maybe, what do you, what has happened to LSU in your mind? Man, they crumbled. They folded under pressure. This is the Brian Kelly special. I mean, he does this everywhere he goes. He did it at Notre Dame. He's doing it at LSU. He's good enough to get get a job somewhere and keep his name in the coaching carousel. But he's not good enough to win the big games. He's not good enough to get you to the SEC championship. Clearly not good enough to get you to the college football playoff. And I mean. This is a failed system. When I look at Garrett Nussmeyer, and I know that we we ridicule him a lot, and we talk about his turnovers and some of the boneheaded mistakes that he makes, I think that that's him just trying to be Superman in a in a situation where he's got no good coaching staff. He doesn't have elite playmakers on the outside. They don't try to run the ball. I mean, what else is he supposed to do? He can't sit here and play conservative the whole game or else they're going to lose. They don't have mm-hmm. the talent. They don't have the depth to keep up with teams playing conservative. Now, I'm not saying that you know, it's good that he's making turnovers. Like, obviously, that's hindering their chances to win. But at the same time, like, Garrett Nussmeyer has the tools. He has the skill set. Like, when you look at these games, yeah, he turns the ball over. He makes a couple boneheaded plays. But then you're looking like, wow, he made a really good throw on fourth down. Or, wow, when it was third and 12, he eluded the pocket, made a made some moves with his legs, and then found an open receiver and got the ball down the field. And, like, he, he makes clutch play after clutch play, but they're always just in a bad position. They're always down by two scores, or they've gotten their self behind after being up a little while. But it's just like I see a quarterback who, in a good situation, maybe on a different team, could have a different result. But the whole LSU program as a whole right now is just going in the wrong direction. You know, last week we talked about LSU's dude deficiency, but they got – Two kind of dudes. Will Campbell, most people agree, is, is the best offensive lineman in the SEC. Emory Jones will probably be, you know, a first, second rounder. He'll, he'll be an, an NFL guy. Seven sacks today. 11 tackles for loss. Now, we did talk earlier in the season, Damien, about how your, your tackles aren't going to influence your run game as much, and they don't have as great of players, um, you know, in, in the interior. They don't have special backs. Mm-hmm. But to, to give up that performance against an LSU defensive front that's, not great. That, that to me, is shocking, especially in that spot where you have so much to lose. And, like, they weren't really in the thick of it, but, like, there's a lot of football left to play. There's a lot of big games left. You could still play your way into the playoff conversation. You could still play your way into Atlanta still, even if the numbers are against you. For them to play that flat against a Florida team that I'm still impressed is still fighting, that, that surprised me. Personally. That's what yeah, I'm that's saying. Like, I'm, it's it's just a, a I don't want to call it a choke job, but I mean, what else is it? This is the biggest game of your season. Like last yeah. weekend was the biggest game of your season, and you got absolutely pancake. You got steamrolled at home. Well, now you get another chance against a Florida team that we know is not that great. DJ Lagway, he's phenomenal, but he's not 100. percent Like we saw today, like you have another yeah. opportunity in front of you where you have 
everything in front of you that you want to gain, but like you just don't do it. And I always point to Brian Kelly because every time we see him in this situation, you get the same results. Whether he's at Notre Dame, whether he's at LSU, even if he goes somewhere else, I would expect to see the same thing. So I can't be like, okay, well, Garrett Nussmeyer, this is all your fault, or, you know, it's LSU's lack of guys. Like, this is a problem. This is a, a dark cloud that follows Brian Kelly wherever he goes. Like I said, he's good enough to have his name in the discussion of, you know, the hottest coaches for the coaching vacancies and stuff like that. But, like, when it comes to winning championships, when it comes to developing championship culture, I don't think he's the guy. But, Chris, <laughs> big picture, you know, obviously you got the Bryce Underwood smoke. We'll see if they hang on to him. What – what do you make of, of where LSU goes from here with Brian Kelly, where it is, what is it, $60 million to get rid of at this point? I don't yeah, think those conversations are getting to that point. No. I don't think they're in that no. spot. But it's not going well. That's obvious. No, they, they are not firing him. It costs $60 million. They don't have the money to do that. Nobody has the money to do that when you're about to put $20 million towards yeah. players. By the way, seven sacks for Florida, as we mentioned. LSU had allowed six all season. So just like the worst performance possible from what is supposed to be a really good offensive line. But so with Brian Kelly, they're not firing him. It's going to cost $60 million. But I keep thinking back to last year when we knew Jim Harbaugh was leaving for the NFL and they hadn't quite named Sharon Moore the head coach yet. Mm -hmm. And you remember it was like leaked out there a little bit through a couple of channels of like, oh, Brian Kelly might be interested in the Michigan job if it opened, <laughs> that type of thing. So like... You wonder, hey, is there is there a chance that Brian Kelly jumps out for another job? The problem is, I don't know what job he would jump out to because we yeah. don't have any power five, power four jobs open. Uh, we may not have any good ones open. Florida's not opening. Baylor's not opening. Arkansas probably not opening. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, then what? Now is there a trickle effect where maybe somebody leaves for the NFL and a job opens? I don't know. But no, they're not firing Brian Kelly. But it is a problem now. It, it does bring back the long-term concern of, is this the guy? Year three is usually when it's working for him. And so far, it's not working. And not only that, they're not yet dropping the bag that you need to, to have if you're in the SEC. Comes back to Bryce Underwood. They've got a really good recruiting class coming in next year. I think it's like ranked number four. Bryce Underwood, number one quarterback outside of Detroit. He's been committed to LSU for a while. He posted on Instagram... Like a couple of days <laughs> ago, it. and it, a, a link to a story citing on three saying <laughs> that Bryce Underwood was likely to decline a ten point five million dollar NIL offer from Michigan, mm -hmm. and it's him and LSU gear. He posts it's that only to his Instagram though. story. It's not for certain. Whatever Just likely like. means, <laughs> and then he and then he deletes it. I don't know if it means anything. Sometimes kids just like to post stuff. Sometimes they like to use stuff for leverage. I don't know. Yeah. But if you if you do lose Bryce Underwood and Michigan is making a huge push for him, then you're in real, real trouble. Because the whole thing with Brian Kelly and LSU as well, they didn't get a lot of guys out of the portal. He hasn't won big yet, but they got the real big, the, the foundational class coming in. That's the reason like you kind of stick with this. And mm -hmm. if that doesn't happen, then you really start to worry.